swear to God, I have to laugh at this point, otherwise I will cry. Not me giving a short king a chance. Five, seven, he was. Small man, short king. I'm five, eight and three quarters. What does he do? He ghosts me. A short king. He dumped me again. <laughs> I want a relationship. I'm so over these mother People, honestly, what I learned this year is that someone can say they love you and they don't mean it. I've had two relationships this year and people probably don't know that because both these men didn't want to be public. And I'm like, bro, I'm such a public person. The f but I, it's just, what? So if you want to be public with me, hit my line because marriage is on the cards. Can we please talk about how unreasonable it is that I'm not allowed to have the men that I want? Because for the past few years, when I have liked a man, and I've been properly interested in him. Tell me why he has either been an asshole or had a girlfriend or moved to a different country within three weeks. If I have to fancy someone one more time and vibe with them and them tell me that they fancy me only for them to finish the sentence with, but I've got a girlfriend. If I have to do that one more time, I swear to you, I'll be celibate for the rest of my life. I will become a nun. You know what I actually can't get my head around? What I really can't get my head around is poor communication. Poor communication, yeah, from the person that you're supposed to be with. And why don't you want to talk to me all the time? Yeah? Why don't you want to see me on the weekends? Why don't you want to make plans with me? Why don't, we, why don't you want to do stuff with me? Why? All my witchy and spiritual girlies out there who are dating losers. You're not supposed to be. Quite literally, no one really talks about this, but when you... You have so much power in your hoo-ha. Like, I don't think you understand exactly where your power lies. A lot of people are skipping over the fact that our hoo-hahs literally can, like, get us to different dimensions. In so many cultures, women are the shamans. We have the power. We're able to speak to the other realms. When men leaders would need help, they would quite literally look for the high priestesses and do the nasty. Like in modern times now, like we're just, hookup culture is destroying us, destroying our energy. Most times when I'm doing it, I was being manipulated into doing it. Um, I'm just gonna be speaking from my experience. The only thing I've ever received is bad karma. If anything, like the only person who benefited from it is the men the loser men what's good guys it's your boy justin j coming to you with another car video let's cook boys let's cook all right this is why women chase guys who can't be controlled by them so i seen a couple of comments and they were literally almost verbatim the same comment except for you know insert the blank word you know it was different a couple of times but basically the comment said this so basically treat women like crap and they'll be yours well basically treat women like this and they'll come to you treat women like this and they'll you know fill out the rest no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is you don't treat women like royalty you don't give women a bunch of free attention and free stuff for no reason okay when you hear the words bad boy asshole jerk all that really you need to pay attention to is what are the actions and behaviors not exactly the words because the words are mumbo jumbo women have shaming language and manipulation tactics jerks bad boys and assholes those are all trash men those are bad men but really at the end of the day they're just words and really what it means is a guy that stands on his square and a guy that can't be controlled by a woman she has to constantly chase controlling him and trying to move his emotions you ever wonder why when you do the nice guy act and you try to move her emotions to make her like you, it backfires on you because deep down inside, she wants to chase you for that. And if you're already giving that to her for existing, she's already won the game. She's already won everything. She knows everything. There's nothing to chase after. So I'm going to make everything clear in this video with these five talking points. With that being said, let's get straight into it. Number one, when a woman can't control your emotions... You actually control her emotions, and that's where the chase starts, okay? So like I said before, 
if you're trying to move a woman's emotions to make her like you more and you're doing the nice guy act, you're not being genuine about it, right? What tends to happen is it backfires on you because you're giving a woman everything up front. There's nothing to chase after. Okay, when you're willing to do whatever a woman wants you to do to make her happy, she's controlling your emotions. And a lot of dudes out here, when they start talking to a new chick, they give her unlimited access to them. They give her a, an unlimited amount of attention. Okay, and what this does is it's, it's letting the woman know that you can be swayed. Okay, why do you think when I tell you guys, if you invite a woman to do A and she says, let's do B, you just say, never mind. Because she doesn't want to do what you want to do. She needs to follow your lead. Because if you say, okay, we won't do that. We'll do this instead because you like that better. When you do that, a woman is literally thinking to herself, I can control this guy. I can control this guy. When a woman can control you, you're not sexually appealing like that. You're a provider guy. You're an attentive guy. You're not a guy that's focused on himself. Therefore, she can't follow you. See, a woman is supposed to blindly follow you when she's really into you like that. But how can a woman do that when you're looking to her for the answers, when you're looking to her to be controlled? You know, when dudes think happy wife, happy life, it's backwards. It's what society sells you to beta ties you. And when a woman can control you, it's game over. So you're not a bad dude. You're not a jerk. You're not an asshole, right? For knowing what you want and expecting a woman to show up a certain type of way. Okay. And you never move off your square to try and please her. This is why you should never try to please a woman because the moment you do that, she sees that she can control you. You can't control her. You cannot tell her what to do, but she can tell you what to do. Does that sound like attraction is going to raise there? Or does that sound like it's going to fizzle out and die very quickly? Guys don't understand this because they've been sold a lie. When you wake up and unplug, you will honestly understand that it's in your best interest to test and screen women. You do not let them test and screen you. Because when guys are getting upset, like she's shit testing me and she's doing this and she's trying to knock me off my square. See, by you even being worried about that is a woman controlling you because you have no control over her. So you're thinking to yourself, how can I gain control? How can I get this woman to fall in line and follow my lead? No, that's supposed to happen naturally. But a lot of guys don't understand this. They've never had this information, so they don't know how to go about things. So they want to do whatever the woman wants to do. If the woman is feeling a certain type of way, a guy will move off of that. You should never really consider a chick's feelings 100%. Yes, sometimes they can be valid, but you should never move and dictate your own actions off of how a woman feels because it changes day to day. So when you let a woman control you emotionally, you have no control, you have no influence, and you have no say so a lot of the times. You're moving to the beat of her drum. And when you do that, a woman knows that she can control you emotionally and it's going to kill everything. So that's why women, a lot of the times chase after guys who can't be controlled emotionally, guys who, who are just like, you know, take it or leave it. Guys that are like, I'm sorry that you feel like that. You know, I'm going to give you some time to yourself. That's something that actually drives women crazy because they don't want to be to themselves. They're expressing that to you so you can try to fix the problem or try to comfort them. But see, when you're a masculine man, you understand that a woman has to go through her emotions on her own time. You can't fix everything. You can't be Mr. Fix It. You know, people have their own problems. So a lot of the times when you tell a woman, well, I'm gonna give you your space, give you time to think about it, it actually infuriates them. It gets them mad because they actually want you to care. And you do care to some degree, but not enough to change the way you do things. Not enough to come being Captain save -a You know, you don't want to do any of that stuff. And it makes a woman more attracted to you because you can't be moved. So that's why women go towards guys that can't be controlled emotionally like that. Number two, most guys fall into a woman's emotional frame. So simultaneously, it causes her to lose respect and it causes her to lose attraction for the guy. So when guys start with these pet names and start doing all this goofy emotional stuff, 
What a woman quickly realizes is he's falling into my frame because he's doing things that I want to be doing that I feel that I should be fighting for to do. But when you don't let a woman earn anything or fight for it, and you're doing it, posting the pictures, the little circle pictures, the heart next to her name, you know, the pet names, all this stuff, staying up late and doing all this stuff to get on her good side and to move her emotions, right? When you're doing all this and you're not giving her an opportunity to come forward at you and be the one actually chasing you, what that's going to do is it's going to make her lose attraction for you. And the loss of respect comes in here. So if you have a heavy belief in something or a stance on something and you move off of that for a woman telling you that she doesn't exactly agree or it doesn't mean that much to her and you're kind of like oh you know what babe i think the same thing that causes a woman to lose respect for you a woman rather hear you tell her you know you can feel that way but i'm a i'm a stick true to who i am i'm a remain you know, who I've been from the very beginning. No, I like that. And I'm not moving off of that. A woman respects that more than you jumping ship and trying to agree with her. This is why guys become kiss ups and they try to agree with women all the time, but it actually backfires because women don't want you to have the same things in common. See, guys always think, I need to move into her frame so we have more things in common. No, that's actually going to kill attraction and make her lose respect for you. A lot of things that women are into, you're not supposed to know anything about. The latest TikTok video, the new fragrance. Oh, yeah, they came out with that bag. Like, as a guy, you're not supposed to know about any of that. You're thinking you're making small talk with her and everything's going well, but you're not. You're, you're not supposed to know these things. And yeah, if you know them and then your back pocket, good, but never move into a chick's frame, okay? When women are trying to drag you along to do something, you're like, I'm not doing that. It's not my scene. I'm not doing that. And women are like, mm, I can't control him. So that's why women go after that as well. Number three, when you cannot be controlled, you're showing a woman consistency. You're showing her that you are who you say you are day in and day out when you cannot be controlled. Okay. When a woman knows that you're this way and every day after that you remain the same and you don't switch up. It breeds more sex appeal. Like a woman is more attracted to you. She sees that you're not afraid to be who you are. You're unapologetically who you are and it boosts your sex appeal. You might even say things that are insensitive. You might even say things that are super direct. But the biggest takeaway from this is you're being consistent. You're not a fake. You're not a phony. And one thing about the truth is it's appealing because you can't really do anything with it. You either have to accept it or just walk away from it but it's never going to change. It's always going to remain the same. So women are attracted to consistency. Okay. See, even when a woman friend zone you, she friend zones you because she likes the attention, the consistency of the attention. She might not like you like that, but she likes that consistency of the attention. So when it comes to consistency, women have a different, they take a different liking to it. But in this sense, when a woman chases, it's because a guy is consistently being authentically himself. Number four, when you can't be controlled by a woman, you are unpredictable, which makes you mysterious, which makes you more attractive to women. And women are going to chase after these guys because here's the thing. When you are not being controlled by a woman, whatever it is that she likes, you're not going to listen to it. You're going to do the opposite. Okay. A lot of the times. So what I mean by that is if a woman says, I have fun doing X, Y, and Z, and then you say, well, no, we're going to do this. And you're going to have a better experience doing this because you're finally doing it with me. So you're very unpredictable. The places that you'll want to go, the things that you're into that you will bring her into. You're very unpredictable. There's no time. There's no, this is why I tell guys, there's never the right time. If you want to approach a chick, you don't need to wait for all these choosing signals. Just go up to her. You're very unpredictable and you're very direct about it. See, this is the thing about, especially when guys want to talk sexual to a woman, all you have to do is be unpredictable and say things that lead to sex. And it's crazy because a woman, you will see how comfortable a woman is talking about sex when you actually know how to go about it because it's unpredictable. All right. So always remember that when you can't be controlled and you're like, you're never thinking to yourself, well, I can't say this. I can't do this. I can't move this way. You never want to think like that because it lowers your sex appeal and your confidence. 
The thing that's going to draw women to you and the reason why they chase guys who are unpredictable is because those guys can't be controlled by the norm of society. What's politically correct? No, they're just unpredictable and women chase after that. Number five, this is something that a lot of guys don't understand. So they think it's the reverse effect. When you are not moved by sex, a woman craves you more because her ultimate value at the end of the day, right? Can't move you. She needs to try and prove more to you. Okay. What I mean by this is guys are always tripping off of sex. They make sex the end all be all. As long as I got the hit, you know, a, a woman could disrespect them, but she's a baddie. It could take a dude five months, six months to smash a chick the whole time he was being some simp beta male provider. He finally gets the box and he thinks, well, I still got the hit though. No, a woman is attracted to you more when in the beginning you show her that you're good at having sex. Then somewhere along the lines, you're not chasing after the sex. So it makes her understand that this guy isn't going to chase me even after I give him sex. Understand how that works. See, a lot of guys are chasing after the sex. They get the sex and then they're continuously chasing after more sex with the same chick. This is why I always say to myself when I see questions like, well, we smashed, but she never talked to me again. Yes, because it was smashing and it was over. See, you were constantly chasing after you're supposed to smash, smash, then be cool off of it. Be cool off of it because a woman thinks, well, he's not going crazy for me. He's not big off of me like that. And I gave him everything that I think that I can give to him. But see, a smart woman will do more. But see, that actually makes women smarten up. Women will actually come to you and start asking you questions. Well, we're not having sex all the time. You've been more busy this week than other weeks because you got things going on. You have options. You're not always available. She doesn't always have access to you. You understand how that works? But when you're chasing behind the sex, it lets a woman know that he will do anything for this box. But see, when you can't be moved off of sex, it lets a woman know oh, he's not going to chase me even after I gave everything that I have to give in the beginning stages, right? And it makes a woman get into her head because, okay, well, we had sex, so I know he's sexually attracted to me, but he's not chasing after it. That's when women start to get aggressive with you. A lot of guys have this fantasy or they think, I want women to get aggressive with me when it comes to sex. I don't want you know, a woman that's just going to lay there. I want a woman that's going to de desire it and crave it from me. This happens when you're not big off of it. You're really good at it, but you're not treating her like she's anything special. It makes a woman crave you more because you're really good at it. You know how many times women have orgasms in one session? If they really like the sex with you, if their body is really reacting positively to the sex they're having with you. When you lay it down on a chick, See, this is why sometimes you have to be careful the way that you're having sex with a woman in the beginning, because if you have sex with every woman the same and you're noticing that women like you, like they're big off of you after having sex, it means that you're laying it down too good, too good. And you're doing things that are making the chick feel a certain type of way. So I'm not saying that, guys, you should completely shut that down. If that's the way you like to do things and it's a part of your strategy to keep women interested. Cool. But all I'm saying is you have to take note of this and be aware of this. OK, so it's a good thing, even when you're laying it down good on her. But then you have to pull back and just let her know with your actions and behaviors, not verbally. If she asks, OK, you answer that. But with your actions, you got to let her know that. There's more of her, basically. You're not being a jerk. You're not being an asshole, a bad boy. You're just somebody who can't be moved by sex. You don't put your emotions into sex. You don't have sex two times with a chick and then be planning happily ever after. Thinking like, damn, I want to shoot up the club right now. No, nope, you're just cool off of it. You understand that this is an experience. And when she's in your presence, you have to enjoy the moment. And it's just the moment. You understand? Then you see a woman start coming after you. See, a lot of the guys that understand, I'm going to pay attention to the women that make it easy for me or the women that come at me or I do my approaches. But for a lot of the, the women that come towards me, I go after the ones that are showing me high interest. The guys who understand that are the guys who understand everything I've been spitting in this video. You understand it because you attract women 
from being this type of guy, but this is just being a man. That's all it really is. You're not going out of your way and trying super hard. No, these are just lessons that young men and even grown men, I'll say older men need to learn. Still to this day, guys should have learned this 20 years ago, but they didn't. So in this video, I wanted to make clear that women go after guys who can't be controlled by them because he's just being a man. So when you hear words like bad boy, asshole, and jerk, never take like this super negative look at the words, okay? Because a lot of the times women have put a negative light on those words when all it actually is is women going towards what they're attracted to, not being able to conquer that man. So now we have to use shaming language and all these tactics to describe how men are good with women and that isn't good for women. When a man is good with women, it's it's a it's a woman is attracted to it, but it's not good for her because at any moment, if she slips up, she can be replaced. If at any moment she slips up, he's not crying. It's not the end of the world for him. So that's why he's a jerk, an asshole or a bad boy. But all you have to realize and understand is that these are attraction triggers. This is what women are actually turned on by, not what they're going to lie and fake say they're attracted to. So I want all guys to understand you're not a bad person. You are still a stand up dude, a good man. If you cannot be controlled by a woman, do not fall for the games that society is trying to play with your mind when it comes to dating. Hope you guys got a lot out of this video. It's your boy, Justin J. Get with you boys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's go, boys. Let's go. What's the craziest thing you've done when you've had a crush on someone? I'll go first. One time I saw him post that he was at a certain restaurant. So obviously I drove to that restaurant just to drive by and see if he happened to be getting in his car. He was. I actually saw his very specific car pulling out of the driveway. So I followed him, obviously. Um, I knew where he lived. So I followed him on his way home. Um, I knew it was going to be quite a long way home. So on the highway... I thought, well, if he drove past me, then he would have to text me. So I tried to look really cute randomly and like put my hair down and I tried to pull up next to every stoplight next to him. He like wouldn't look over. We literally pulled up next to each other. And so I had to keep on going, keep on following him home, obviously, but in, in the like lane next to him. So what I thought about doing is what if I ran into his car? Like if I crashed him, then he'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I would have to make it. So he crashed into me. So then he would be sorry that he hit me and be like, oh my God, but wait, it's so good to see you. Um, sorry, I haven't spoken to you in a few weeks. Busy. Um, but, you know, if he crashed into me, then I don't know, maybe we'd fall in love or something. But um, I just ended up driving really fast and my heart was pounding a lot. And I let him drive. I let him go home. I turned around. I'm growing up. And once you're in it, it's like, you're in it. You're in it. And then you got to get out. And then once you're out, then you just start never over it. You're never over it. I think there's an absolute psychological reason why situationships are so hard to get over. I know for myself, if I'm dating somebody and then we have a title, right? So we progress from dating to having a title for each other. And then from there we break up, like I can get over that scenario. Like my brain can categorize it and make sense. But when you have all of these deep, intense, like feelings for someone you have like a really like intense connection with, but that is never like labeled or categorized. And then it ends. Like, I just feel like your, your, your brain doesn't know what to do with that information. I regularly have nightmares <laughs> about the two people that I was in situationships with.